All right. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, 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 and we cry, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. As I walk through the door, I sense His presence. And I knew this was the place where love abounds. temple Jehovah God abides here for we are standing in his presence on holy ground we are standing still be found if you have a need I know he has the answer reach out and claim it child you're standing on holy ground we are standing Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all Above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone. A rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. 
Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to worship here at St. John. Uh, my name is Paul Offhouse. I'm the pastor here. Uh, as we gather together uh, remotely, we'd ask that you take a moment and drop your name in the comments section on our Facebook page uh, to acknowledge that you're with us. If there's more than just you logged in and watching, go ahead and put those folks' names as well. Uh, and uh, some of the folk who are here uh, who cannot access it online, again, can card as usual here, uh, and then put that uh, in the joy box on the way out. There you go. Uh, today in worship, we are moving into the rest of the Epiphany accounts. This is the season technically after the Epiphany of our Lord, but all of the Gospel accounts will focus on manifestations, which is what that word means, of the glory of God, revealed especially in, in the face and ministry and life of Jesus Christ our Lord. So today we're going to hear one of the call narratives, uh, this one from John's Gospel. Then next Sunday we'll jump back to Mark's Gospel, which will be our, our regular Gospel throughout this year B of the church lectionary, and hear a call story in Mark's Gospel. So you might kind of hold today's Gospel in tension with next Sunday's Gospel um, uh, when we get to that point. Also, uh, during worship, at the end of worship, just before the benediction, you'll see if you have a bulletin in front of you online, uh, and that we are having the ins recognition and installation, or installation and recognition of our council and other leaders here at St. John. So the way that works, uh, there's an email that was sent out to those leaders that you can look for. It's, I, I apologize, I just sent it late last night, but there's a link to the Zoom meeting in there. If you can't find that, you can, there'll be a link in the Facebook feed. That's probably the best way to do it. Look for that in the comments section. It's the same Zoom feed that we're using for the Art of Neighboring gathering that's after service today. And that will start no later than 11.15. It might start a little bit early if we're done and ready to go with that. So if you're also planning on staying for, the, for that, then just stay on that feed and once you go to the Facebook, once you go to the Zoom meeting, I would just leave the Facebook feed and take the rest of the service on Zoom. Uh, and please do uh, mute your microphone unless you're on council, and then council will be verbally responding as we install you as officers and uh, members for the coming year. I uh, hope that makes enough sense, coupled with an email that you can find uh, about how that's going to work. I'll be joining with my laptop down here, so um, we'll, we'll see you on the Facebook feed and also be in, in, with us in worship. So that's kind of the plan. We thought it's one way that we can bring you together uh, here when we uh, aren't able to on, on a regular basis. So hopefully it's going to work out just fine, and we'll see some more friendly faces. We'll be putting those faces up on the screen for those of you who are here, uh, so you can participate and see those folk. And if you are one of those leaders, then stand when, I, um, when you're area of ministry is recognized or when I ask you to and you fit that bill. So that's, and that's how that works. We'll see you at the Zoom part later in the service for that. Uh, the other group that's going on besides the Art of Neighboring group after worship today, this also is in your bulletin, is the same kind of different as me. We had a good group uh, on Saturday and if you're interested you can still join us, uh, contact me directly uh, or see the bulletin for more details on, on that. At this time Let's uh, please stand as we're able, or stand if you're able, for a time of confession. And that's found on page 3 in your bulletins and up also up on your screens. Come, let us worship Jesus Christ, crucified yet resurrected for the life of the world. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins 
and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Hear the good news. How vast is God's grace. As a called and ordained minister, uh, ordained minister of the cross. You know, let me try that again. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having been reconciled to God, let us also be reconciled with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's share that peace with those around us uh, in the appropriate fashion here today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you're standing, you may be seated as we attend to the reading of God's Word. Our first reading comes from the third chapter of 1 Samuel, beginning with the first verse. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. 
Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Psalm 139 will be spoken responsively. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Our second reading comes from the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with the 12th verse. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is a truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. 
Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The gospel or good news of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you're standing, you may be seated. Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and the applications of our lives be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, in whom we place our trust. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Two guys walked into a bar. Such is a classic opening to what hopefully would become a pretty good joke. Or perhaps it's just the opening to one of the world's shortest jokes. Two guys walked into a bar. The third guy ducked. But I'm bumps. Today's gospel has me thinking of trying my hand with a different opener of a joke. So this fig tree climbed a ladder. The fig tree and the ladder in a joke together. It, it, they're actually, the fig tree and the ladder are two of the more interesting characters, if we can personify them a little bit, in our gospel reading this morning. Both help connect the story of Jesus' call of Nathanael more fully both to the Old Testament roots of Jesus as the Messiah and as God's people gathered and then gathered again in and through Jesus and also help connect Nathanael's call to us and our call here today. First, the fig tree. I saw you under the fig tree, Jesus tells Nathanael, as he is coming to him in obedience to Philip's invitation, come and see, right? Come and see, he's on his way, and as he approaches Jesus, Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree. Now the fig tree has significance in the Old Testament. Any big Hamilton fans out there? Okay, I got one in here, and I see those hands, not really, but okay, there's another in here, and so I'm sure at least... A few of you raise your hands out there. You might recall George Washington in the movie saying at the end of his resignation of his term as president, he wants to sit under his own fig tree. It's, a, it's a imi, an image the Old Testament gives us in several places. Uh, Zechariah 3.10, um, Isaiah 36.16, Micah 4.4 of prosperity and peace. As Washington longed for that peace and prosperity that would come as he resigned from public office. Uh, so Nathaniel apparently is under a fig tree, and perhaps he too is longing for some of that peace and prosperity that comes with such a lounging. I don't know if it's his own fig tree or a general fig tree, but the fig tree also got associated with the Messiah, that the Messiah's coming would give each person his or her own fig tree. Well, back then, patriarchally, maybe his own fig tree for him to provide for his family, but that is a whole other story. That the Messiah's coming would provide shelter for all. Shelter for all. We hear in Song of Songs or Solomon, the fig tree puts forth its figs, 
and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. He sets the context of peace, of spring, of hope. And then he says to his beloved, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the covert of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet, and your face is lovely. Words we all could hear spoken to ourselves from our beloved who comes to woo us with his love within the context of the peace and prosperity of a fig tree in blossom, in bloom. Hosea picks up this theme of the beloved gathering his beloved in chapter 9. Like grapes in the wilderness I found Israel Like the first fruit on the fig tree in its first season, I saw your ancestors. This relationship that God formed with their most ancient ancestor, Abraham, the first one, the one whom God called to have that special relationship through Isaac and Jacob. We're going to get to Jacob here in just a bit, who became Israel, one who struggled and wrestled with God and prevailed. And then the 12 sons of Israel became the 12 tribes, known as the people of Israel, the Israelites. God established a special relationship. And it's no coincidence that a fig tree is mentioned here in the early parts of John's Gospel, for God is continuing that special relationship. God is taking that fig tree, as branch, the branches of the fig tree, and extending them to others. This new Israel starts, of course, with the people of Israel. All these early followers of Jesus, all of his 12 were Jews, Israelites, but extends eventually to the Gentiles, doesn't it? To all of us. There's a new fig tree blossoming forth, and it starts with come and see. Nathaniel under the fig tree suggests a time of peace, of God's shalom. Some scholars even suggest Nathaniel was meditating, possibly even uh, on the story of Jacob and the ladder, which we're going to get to with our other character and our joke. This would better explain Jacob's amazement when Jesus would reference the very thing on which he had been meditating under that fig tree when Jesus saw him. But the greatest meaning I think we can get from the fig tree comes when we connect it to Philip's invitation to come and see. And the invitation to a deeper relationship with Jesus that together they invoke. It is that relationship all throughout John's gospel, not just here in chapter 1, that is the priority, that is the way in which God is extending the peace, the shalom, the kingdom of God. John 4, the woman at the well says, come and see the man who showed me everything about myself. There's this knowledge that Jesus has about us that is intimate, that is invitational, that is relational. And the phrase, come and see, it could be a great hashtag, right? Hashtag, come and see, is our invitation more deeply into that relationship with Jesus, that core relationship for all of us in our lives on this life in this life and in the life to come. The come and see of verse 46, which echoes verse 39, where Jesus himself says come and see to his first two disciples to be called in John, Andrew and uh, Philip, sets up in verse 50 the statement, you will see greater things than these. And even later on in John, John 14, verse 12, you will do greater things than these. Not only will you, my followers, see greater things than these, but Jesus says, very truly I tell you, John 14, 12, again, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, in fact, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. The connection with Jesus does not end when he goes to the Father. It's still here today, 2,000 years later, through his Spirit. He invites us into relationship, and then he sends us forth to 
not only, first he invites us into relationship and to see the works of God, the glory of God shown to us. And then he invites us to go forth and show forth that glory ourselves in our lives. The latter is that connection to the glory of God at work in our lives, in our world, especially through Jesus. But the latter is, as I said, a reference to the Old Testament. And Jacob, Abraham's grandson, who becomes Israel, has an experience on his way out in exile where he dreams of a ladder that is reaching up to the heavens where God resides. And angels are going out, up and down, up and down. In other words, it's a thin place where God is present. The presence and power of God is here on earth as it is in heaven. As we pray, your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This is a connection point for Jacob, a reminder that God is with him on earth as God is with uh, those in heaven. He ends up calling the place Bethel, which means the house of God. Bethel became one of those great sanctuaries in Israel, one of the places where early Israelite worship was carried on. And why wouldn't it be? With this tradition of Jacob's dream and the ladder and the glory of God, you would want to go to that place too. That maybe if you slept there, that same vision would happen to you. And the glory of God would be among you on earth as it is in heaven. This tradition, this sense that God was really present in Bethel, also came to be linked with the other Bethel. Bethel means house of God. And then the Israelites built the temple, which was the other Bethel, the other house of God, the place where God actually did dwell on earth as in heaven. And Nathaniel is one true, as a true Israelite, that is Israel, who once was called Jacob the deceiver. This time, he is the one in whom there is no deceit, no guile, no trick. And he is here in the house of God. Jesus is saying to Nathaniel and to us, if you follow me, you'll be watching what it looks like when heaven and earth are open to each other. You won't necessarily see the angels themselves, but you'll see things happening which show that they're there all right. When you're with Jesus, it's as though you're in the house of God. The temple itself with God's angels coming and going and God's own presence there beside you. And in fact, now that the temple is no more, now that Jesus has given us his presence through his Holy Spirit, that sense of the glory and the power and the presence of God is here, is there as you watch, wherever you're watching this morning, as children of God through the waters of baptism, the Holy Spirit of Jesus is in us. Can we see? Can we hear the rush of angels' wings and see glory everywhere? Such is the image that is given to us. Such is the invitation with come and see. But that's where my joke would go after. So this fig tree climbs a ladder and the ladder says to the fig tree, Come and see. The latter says, come and see what I've seen. I've seen the face of God. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the glory of God at work in heaven and on earth. Hey, fig tree, come and see. For this glory of God, this manifestation, this epiphany of God's glory is part of the kingdom of God. It is part of the shalom that the fig tree represents. The righteousness and the peace and the justice, and the goodness, and the mercy, and the love, and the joy of our salvation, given fully in and through Jesus Christ, who says to Nathaniel, as he says to you and me, come and see. And don't let his location, Jesus's Location fool you. Back then, Nazareth was a downer. 
We think of Nazareth highly. I visited Nazareth. It's awesome to be there in what was Jesus' hometown. But that back then, it was a backwater place south of the big city, Sepphoris. Uh, and not much happened there. That's why Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He almost missed it, you see. He was in danger of missing it because of his preconceived notion of Nazareth. Can anything good come out of, what would you say? Not Nazareth. What is the thing that you have judged already has no good in it and yet might indeed really have the glory of God? Might have beauty and truth and all that the kingdom of God represents in it if you would only come and see. Might you not find Jesus in unexpected places like Nathaniel found him in a Nazarene, one from Nazareth. I'll let you think on that and what your Nazareth might be. For I think it's different for each of us. Some of us might have the same one or ones, but each one of us needs to ask, what is my Nazareth? Like Nathaniel, can I overcome my prejudice, my prejudging, and see beyond to find that in this person or in this place, in this blank is indeed something that may contain the glory of God and may be a means of helping me experience God's presence and power more fully. May we indeed come and see. Come and see and not have anything hinder us from coming. And as we come and see the glory of God on earth as it is in heaven, in and through Jesus, through his spirit, through places we would not expect to even see it and people in whom we would not expect to see it, may we be moved like Nathaniel to answer Jesus' command again and again and again. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me me. And may the world and you be the richer for it. Amen. from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to say.
If you're able, please stand. Let us confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, revealed to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, our missions and ministries, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that are responding to the COVID-19 pandemic with love and wisdom, including Lutheran World Relief, the Red Cross, and our local, state, and federal health agencies and hospitals. Bless our efforts. Keep those on the front lines of care safe and healthy. Comfort and bring your healing to those who are grieving the loss of a loved one due to the virus. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of peace, bring peace and order out of the chaos that descended upon our Capitol building on, July, on January 6th. Bring unity to our nation in the midst of division. Grant that the remaining days before and including Inauguration Day are peaceful. Help all involved in the transition work together for the good of our people and for the good of our land. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of love, you bless marriage and have given it to humanity as a blessing. Bless and strengthen all marriages during these difficult times. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially those affected by the coronavirus, as well as the family of Erlene, Andrew, the family of Grant, Diane, Terry, Kyle, Richard, Carol, Jeanette, Jan, Carolyn, Mick, and Amy, that God console all who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us online, and for all those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those serving in the armed forces of the world, that they feel the power of your protection and the comfort of our support. We especially remember our brothers Aaron, Anthony, Nicholas, Vince, Cody, Devin, Lucas, Matt, Warren, Jonathan, and Carter. Grant each of them confidence in the face of uncertainty and danger. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Lord God, watch over and protect our brothers and sisters at Epiphany Lutheran Church in Fort Wayne and their pastor, Richard Hartman, fellow members with us of the body of Christ. Fill them ever more fully with your Holy Spirit. Proclaim through them the gospel, your power of salvation to all who believe. Bless them both in ministry and mission that their neighbors might find the life that is truly life. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We pray for our efforts to neighbor well in the West Central neighborhood where you planted our congregation back in 1853. 
Strengthen, guide, and equip all those working to love and serve those in our community. Bless the various activities, both those already on the calendar and those yet to be planned, that allow us, your beloved disciples, to neighbor well. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who, deal, who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you're standing, you may be seated for a time of offering. sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Thankful hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth with joy, with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this often in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this cup, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you're standing, you may be seated. For those receiving communion, there's a word about what we as Lutheran Christians proclaim goes on in this meal on page 9 in your bulletin and also up on the screens. Uh, those communing in your home, there are instructions for how to have prepared your table. That's on page two, I believe, in the front of your bulletin. Uh, all are welcome to commune and receive the Lord Jesus in this holy sacrament.
Those who are able, please stand. Those receiving communion, a blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace both now and forevermore. We turn at this time to the recognition and installation of leaders in the congregation. I do invite you, as I mentioned, if you are a leader in this congregation or on a committee uh, at St. John, that you would join the Zoom call if you're able to do that, or you can continue to interact on Facebook, and uh, when you're area or position is called, I'm going to invite you to um, type in your name and acknowledge, uh, so we can acknowledge you there in, in our midst. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to unmute my microphone, Pete. I want to, we're getting the feed through this, so I don't need to worry about, excellent. We gather together at the font, and first we'd like to, and I would like to invite all congregation council members to uh, wave on your Zoom call uh, or any type of hello if you're on Facebook. So if you're there and you're on council, uh, wave there and maybe wave again when I call your name. I'm going to name the different uh, members of, of council and I know uh, at least one is here in, in our worship, two are here in our worship space as well. As I read your name, we have newly elected uh, members first from this past December. John Platt. Tom Spencer. Sarah Zuber is here. Some of you here can see her. And then our returning members, Diane Gebfert. I think Diane is on there. Deb Kelsey Charland, who is our vice president, our vice chair, I should say. And Sarah, I neglected to mention, is serving as our secretary as she comes on board council. John Johnson Sr., Susie Manier, Mike Mommer, our chair, there's Mike. Pete Newcomb, he's here in the sanctuary in the back and Charity Wolf, our treasurer. The following people have been elected to the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. <clears throat> you have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, but this, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, council members who are present here on Facebook, remotely through Zoom or in person, Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please say, I will and I ask God 
to help me. I will. I will. And I ask, and I ask God, God to help, help you. you. And I ask, I ask God, God to help you. People, People of God, I ask, I ask you, will you, will you support, support these, these your elected, elected leaders? leaders? And will and you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please say, we will, and we ask God to help us. We, we will, and we ask, ask God, God to help, to help us. us. Yes. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. I invite those standing here to be seated uh, as we continue with this. And then if, please sit if you're here in the worship space. And if you are named, then stand up uh, to be acknowledged. I'd now like to invite our paid staff to wave on your Zoom call or type hello in if you're on Facebook as I read your, or wave and stand if you're here in worship, as I read your name. Susan Benish, our bookkeeper. Martin Giggler, our organist. There's Martin. Jay Hare, our minister of music. Steve Reek, our financial secretary. Jamie Robbins, our church secretary. Tina Thompson, our custodian. And Charity Wolf, our treasurer. I'd also like to have the staff stay standing, but invite those leaders elected at our annual congregational meeting in early December to wave on your Zoom call or type hello on Facebook as I read your name. Elected to the cemetery board, in December, Brett Fisher, Bob Gebfert, Tina Thompson, and Chris Walda. Elected to our finance team and audit committee, Cheryl Kinzel. Elected to the nominating committee, Susie Manier, Sherry Mommer, Pete Newcomb, Abigail Offhouse, Sam Sterick, and Chris Walda. Elected to serve as St. John delegates to the 2021 Senate Assembly, Susan Benish, Jay Hare, and Pete Newcomb. Elected to serve on the Wellspring Ministries Congregational Advisory Team, Jim Campbell. Our numbers are growing. I'd now like to invite other leaders to wave on your Zoom call or type a hello if on Facebook including others who serve on the various committees and ministries just mentioned. So anyone that serves on the ministry I just mentioned, please stand or wave or say hello. Also, our parish nurses, those serving as deacons or assisting ministers, those serving as deacons or assisting, there we go. Mike's already standing in the back. The journey leadership, Lutheran Life Villages and Lutheran Foundation delegates, our property team, including Kurt Coleman, who is joining this year, sharing the joy leadership, Sunday school teachers. I know we've been a bit of hiatus, but you're still our Sunday school teachers. Our Welka leadership, our West Central Coffee Advisory Board, those leading small groups or Bible studies. I see you, Dennis. You get to stand. Those serving in a wider ministry setting outside St. John, such as a board in the community, and several of you are serving in boards, and any other who leads a ministry here at St. John. That's my cover in case I missed you. Now that we have other folks standing... I'd like to pray for these folk as well. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let us pray. 
Lord God, thank you for each person here present, present remotely, and, and also those who are serving as leaders in this congregation who are not able to be present here today for whatever reason. We ask your blessing upon us all as we seek to lead your people in the way that you would have us go, as we seek as a community to be fed and led by you, and then to turn around and live as neighbors in the West Central community where you've planted us since 1853, the city of Fort Wayne, and all the world. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit to do just that. Fill us with hope and help us to be of good cheer, knowing that you are with us along the journey and knowing that that makes all the difference. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, uh, one and all. It's so hard to be looking up here, over there, down here, but uh, this is uh, a neat opportunity to bring some of you into worship with us. You, you were on the screen there during that time. And I want to remind you, if you're on the Zoom call and you want to participate in the Art of Neighboring uh, session, just stay on this call now for the rest of the service. We have a benediction and a, a song of, of sending and a dismissal, and we're done. And then um, Dennis will be joining you uh, to uh, facilitate that conversation as well. Uh, that starts no later than 11.15, uh, shortly after our worship is done here today. Thank you. I believe I have a benediction. Yes. If you're able, please stand. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus.